What's up, beautiful people? This is a EMAX Stacks exclusive interview. I'm Edward McFarland Jr., Houston's very own local sports reporter. And the man I got sitting next to me, if you don't know him, shame on you, but it's all good. I'm going to forgive you, my boy. Demond Demons, how you doing, man? I'm doing straight, bro. Now, the last time we tried to set up this interview, you was caught up, you was busy, you was kicking it with OBJ. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a little insight on how it was spending time with him over the zone. Uh, just learning the, you know, fundamentals and like route running and, and out breaking releases, you know, stuff like that. And having footwork came right there with me, just you know, having me every step of the way. It's been nice. I like it. Uh, OBJ is a top receiver in the NFL. Yeah. When you're talking about the top wide receiver in the nation of class 2020, the Mon Demas name has to pop up in the person's mind when they're thinking about who's the top wide receiver in 2020. What does that mean to you? It means I got to work harder. Got to keep that saying. Just as much as people think of me, okay, he's the best receiver in the nation, I got to keep that. I can't just sit right there and be like, okay, I'm the best. Receiving the nation, I can't be satisfied. I gotta still take it. I gotta still act like I'm the last receiver in the nation. Now you're with the Tom Ball Cobras. Yes, sir. Um, having to develop a new chemistry with a new quarterback and Hunter Dunn, new coaching staff, having to build relationships with them, having to learn a whole new system. What's been the overall adjustment for you so far? The overall adjustment has been smooth, like the transition. I mean, yeah, true enough, I miss no forest, but I left because of, you know, the home environment that I used to stay in. And my papa felt the need that, okay, he's going to fall victim to the streets, the, you know, the pilot. So I got to move him. So that's what we did. So we decided to come out here in a better environment and play football and go to school first and then play football. How difficult of a decision was that for you to go in and just make that transfer? It was kind of difficult because I didn't want to leave. You know, I cried when I mean, Papa told me. I was crying. I was like, I don't want to go. But then I had to think about it like this. Like, if I stay, I'm probably not going to prosper. If I leave, it's a possibility. So you got to open up your options. You got to expand instead of staying one dimension. So that's what I did. I expanded. Um, even though you now in Tomball, born and raised on the north side, or as some of us like to say, the north. The north. <laughs> uh, you are the type of person, man, you true to your faith, strong in your faith. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a superstar. You know you're a superstar, but you don't get the big head. You don't feel like you're beneath or anybody is beneath you with whoever you interact with. You were just always treating people with the utmost respect. I always do. Like with the trainers, like the trainers are the most important people on the football team because without them, we have to go and get water ourselves. We got to wipe our face ourselves. Like they do that. So why not give them the same respect as we give our coaches or as we give each other? That's how I see it. Because I be seeing like some people, I be getting mad because they'll drop a water bottle on the ground. Both hand it to them because they handed it to you. Like, that's how I be thinking. Like, it's just a respect thing. How much does being from the North Side and your parents' upbringing with how they raised you play a part in the type of person you are off the field? Because you know, nobody's ever going to hear about the mom getting in any type of trouble. Nah. So how much does that play a part in not only the person you are off the field, but the dog you are on the field? It's like my mama taught me, if you want something, you, you can't just sit right there and wait for it. You got to go take it. You got to go get it. I, that's how I've been. Like I just went to go and take it. Like if it's right, if it's if I if it's wrong and I believe that it's right, I'm still gonna stick with my wrong, even though I'm wrong. But I'm still be right because I'm sticking with my wrong. So when your high school football career comes to an end after this season, you'll be moving on to Agland. Agland. I remember we kind of talked a little bit last year, you know, after you had kind of went viral and committed with uh, yeah. Coach Fisher and gave him a hug and stuff. Yeah. With everybody and their mama wanting me to recruit you, even having Nick Saban come over to our boy side to try to recruit you. <laughs> what ultimately led to your decision to commit to Texas A&M? It was just the coaching staff, uh, the players, and like 
I mean, I stayed down the street in the SEC. That's all. I just wanted to play in the SEC school. It didn't matter what school it was. I just wanted to go to a school where I feel comfortable, where I feel like I can call home. And like I can get a group of people that'll play for me and we can play for each other. And had a coaches to back us up. So, I mean, that's that's what I that's all I wanted and I feel that same and I feel that the energy that I just said at Texas A and M. So that's why I chose Texas A and M. Um tell me how it felt to kinda just officially get that, that offer letter. I cried. I ain't gonna lie. I sat in my room. My mama came, she gave me the she gave me the little letter. She didn't know what it was. So she just gave it to me. I look at it, I open it, and I just looked. I was like, all oh, this work is finally paying off. It's like it, this is just a start, like you know. So I'm a I'm a little reminiscent still. I ain't gonna. I'm not gonna be able to see you play as much now that you're waiting in Tom Ball. Yeah. But during that same time last year when you had uh, committed to Texas A&M. I remember we was talking on the phone for a little bit, and during that time, North Forest was kind of in a little bit of a drought in the season. Yeah. And you was like, yo, come to the game, I promise you, we're going to get back on the right track. And you even said, yo, I'm going to have six touchdowns. Make sure you get it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be there. And sure enough, you had five touchdowns, but the only reason you didn't have six because the I call went back. back. Yeah, the call <laughs> went back. So to me, watching you in that game, it's like, he's really about to get six touchdowns, like he told me over the phone. <laughs> Like, I think that's your best performance as far as like me being able to see you play. And only had five touches. Only, only five touches. And then like, well, well the pump return. Okay. So, but one got called back. What do you think is your, by far, your best performance so far? My best performance? It's going to be my last performance. Why is that? This year. It's all I got. Hospital. This is this what you're going to remember from high school. You're not going to link up with your friends about five years later and be like, ah, who was in college? You're going to say high school. Man, I remember the high school days, man. We beat Lufkin, we beat them, we beat Cash, we yeah, Like, you know, like, you're going to think about them days. Yeah, when you get to college, just, everybody don't make it to college. I'm going to just be realistic. Everybody don't make it to college. Everybody don't get to play college ball. A lot of people get to play high school ball. So that's why. Everybody reminisce on high school in that college. So is it safe to say your best high school football playing days have yet to come? Yeah. This is just a warm up. Now it's time to shine. <laughs> now it's time to now it's time to ball. That's scary. <laughs> it's time to ball now. I just gave y'all a lit. Just a lit. Okay. Now it's time to be like, what this was two years ago? What this was a year ago? Mm, yeah. It's like that. Yeah. It's gonna get real nasty, real cool. Um, with this being your, again, your final high school football season, take me through what your mindset is going into this season and just what are those emotions, getting ready for the season? I don't want it to go. I ain't even a lot, but I mean, time to wait on nobody. So I gotta get it. I gotta, I gotta play for my team. My team gonna play for me. You just got to roll with the punches. Uh, quick story. So about three years ago when I had just started covering HISD, and I went to a coaches meeting to start off the season just to introduce myself. And so after that meeting, it was a stadium director. There. And so he walked up to me. He was just like, oh, so you're going to be covering, you know, the district? I was like, yeah. And so he told me, looked me in my eyes and told me, I never told you this before. He looked at me, he said, Make sure you look out for the mind demons at North Falls. He said, don't worry about what his number is. You'll know him when you see him. <laughs> and I was like, he like, he got it like that. He stadium directly with me dead in my eyes. And he was like, that boy will be playing on Sundays. And sure enough, went to your game. And one, one beat before long. Yeah, that's the mind demons. <laughs> when you hear stuff like that, do you feel any type of pressure from the expectations of others on how they want you to be so great? Honestly, you want me to be honest with you? Keep it a book. No. no. Pressure burst pipes. I'm not pipe. Do I look like pipe? I'm a human being. I don't bust. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a ball. Yeah, I'm a ball. Like, it's just what I do. I'm not trying to sound cocky. It's just confident. You know, 
It's just comfort. That's all it is. So no, nah, I don't. I don't fold under pressure. That's not my limo. It's it's more rise to the occasion or do the extra. That's that's what I stand for. Well, there you have it. We're gonna end on that note as always, man. I'm sorry we got to connect again. Yes, sir. Man. Definitely look forward to you say. The, the, the best is yet to come as you get ready for it. Yeah, man. So, man. So, if yeah. y'all want to see the best, <laughs> Tom Ball High School is where it's at. There you have it. This is an exclusive Emax Stacks interview. Be on the lookout for more content just like this. Signing out, the man, Demon Demons. Yes, sir. And I got my eye on the prize. I put it up on the block. I just some far and kept trying. I cannot feel not this time. I took some heaven, kept going. Wasn't no stopping the shine. Had to believe what I know. One day I get mine. I got my eye on the prize. I put it all on the line. I took some far and kept trying. I cannot feel not this time. I took the heaven, kept going. Ain't no stopping the shine. I had to believe what I know. One day I get mine. Stay in the yoke, only way it's gonna go. After that, nigga, nigga, get paid for the show. Get paid for the tour, never take no manure. Fuck up, we're getting up, and we taking it to them. on the dash, but I'm still looking. Cause some cops out here, they still crooked. And most of these niggas, they still rookies. They say they OGs, but they still silky. I done came down like I got the right away. Never give a heap of mind to what these niggas gotta say. Always keep my head up, looking for the brighter day. If you know it's about the money, then you know I'll find a way. A young scholar, trying to make a dollar. I'm always trying to get it.